had this grand plan that I was gonna do a paddle board and I was going to talk to you guys as I paddle, but a couple of problems with that. Um, one, I think the lighting is horrible. You can't even see me. And then uh, also the wind is kind of pushing me, so I have to keep paddling. I was gonna do the book review while paddle boarding, while speaking to you guys on the uh, GoPro. I'm still gonna do, uh, still gonna talk to you guys about the book, but I wanna paddle over to like a dock or something. I'll tie onto a dock, that way I can hold tight for five or 10 minutes and talk to you guys about book two, Marcus Aurelius. All right, I found myself a little dock here. Actually, I'm at the Back Bay Science Center. They have a dock in the back here. But I'll tell you where I'm at real quick. Uh, I'm here in Newport Beach. I'm in the back bay. So there's a place actually called the Dunes, which is a popular campground. A lot of RVs come here and also some boat marinas. Uh, and it's popular with paddle boarding and kayaking. And then if you go even further east, I guess it'd be kind of like a northeast, there is what they call the back bay, which is kind of like, I don't know what you would call it, but a kind of a protected area of water where the water goes from the ocean but it goes back for a couple of miles and it's really a nice place to do paddle boarding and everything. I'll show you a bit of the sights as I, as I speak uh, today about the chapter two, Marcus Aurelius, book two rather. So it's important to know when you get into book two, the little description at the beginning. It says, on the river Gran among the Quadi. The Quadi were a dramatic tribe that were actually fighting the Romans and the River Grand is referring to uh, a river that was on the border of the Roman Empire uh, territory. It was actually, I guess, what is modern day Slovakia. And apparently Marcus Aurelius was leading his troops through this battle while he was writing this portion of his journal. So that is why a lot of the themes in book two are related to like death, not being afraid to die. Uh, we only have the present. Uh, so it's important to actually see it in that context of why he's writing the things he's writing in this particular chapter. I, I read you a couple of paragraphs in the last couple of episodes, and I'll read you, you know, even actually the first day I even started this challenge, I read you paragraph four, which was, remember how long you've been putting this off, how many extensions the gods have given you, and how you didn't use them. At some point, you have to recognize what world it is that you belong to, what power rules it, and from what source you spring, that there is a limit to the time assigned to you, and if you don't use it to your free self, it will be gone and will never return. And a lot of the real kind of foundations of the Stoic philosophy are seen in this book too. Things like this under paragraph 14, it says, remember two things, that everything has been the same and keeps recurring, and it makes no difference whether you see the same things recur in 100 years or 200 or in an infinite period. I think what he's talking about is literally human behavior uh, repeats itself and it's almost predictable even in a daily activity. I mean, you can predict what's going to happen when you cut off someone in a car or you, you know, I mean, you can predict these things because it's everything that's happened before happens again. Everything that happens now has happened before. You know, whether that is history as far as the economy or uh, relationships, whenever you're in a bad relationship, uh, you don't get along, I mean, it's doomed, right? I mean, because that's how it happens throughout forever. I mean, there are certain combinations of things that are just, that's just the way it is. Um, everything has happened before and it will happen again. Another interesting note is that Shakespeare was actually heavily influenced by Marcus Aurelius in this book of meditations because a lot of uh, Shakespeare's writings and, the, and some of the dialogue in the plays refers to some of this same kind of thinking of the Stoic philosophy. Uh, that was an interesting thing that I, that I noted and I saw it in some of my research. For example, Everything is just an impression. That's paragraph 15. Everything is just an impression and the response is obvious enough But the point is a useful one if you take it for what it's worth There's a theme in Hamlet where all things only as you think they are Kind of that we have the ability and that that also goes to the stoic philosophy You know the idea is that the world is what we make it. Uh, I think is the philosophy there um, it's all, we, could, we can make it a bad place, we can make it a good place, we can be happy, we can be sad. Uh, it is what we make it. Um, and that's true, I mean, everything is a perception. Everything is our reality, sorry for the planes overhead. The idea 
I think of his philosophy and also the kind of the stoic philosophy, right? I mean, the term stoic, meaning that you're not going to let things uh, maybe bother you or get to you. Uh, and that's because you have control of how you see the world, you know, and that you, your own perception of the world is your reality. So that's the idea, I think, behind that paragraph there. We choose how we're going to react to someone being a jerk to us. Um, we choose how we're going to treat other people. We choose how we live each day. We choose if we're going to wake up in a, in a bad mood and be mad at our family members, or we choose if we're going to be happy. We, we choose if we actually let someone that we, maybe it is a family member, we choose if, if, we, if a family member is going to be able to piss us off and get under our skin. That's all our own doing. Uh, we choose whether we want to have something that may be seen as uh, bad happening, we get a flat tire or something, whether that's going to ruin the day or whether that's just a challenge in the day that we can uh, change into a positive. So those are all the, the ideas behind it, that we have the control over our mind, uh, we have control over our life, and all we have is the present. So why do we want to waste um, these bad thoughts or this time of being in a bad mood when all we have is the present? So uh, I think that's some of the critical points there of not only book two, but just stoicism in general. That the longest lived and those who die soonest lose the same thing. The present is all that we can give up, since that is all we have. And what you do not have, you cannot lose. I also want to conclude by just saying, it's kind of funny, I tried to subject my family to this book. Last night we went to a picnic, this place called Lookout Point, a beautiful place in Newport Beach that overlooks the ocean. Actually, it's right at the where the jetty meets the harbor and comes into Newport Beach and a lot of people go there and have picnics and everything. So we went over there, had a nice picnic, and I ended up reading them the entire book two. So I wanna read you guys book two of this book, Meditations. And I wanted to get their reaction. And I mean, it's kind of a heavy, it's kind of heavy philosophy for having a picnic and talking about it. So I, I, I did get a little bit of a response from both uh, Christina and Stephanie, here's that. I mean, he's right, you can't be afraid of death because it's gonna happen eventually. Yeah. But it just, it doesn't really matter when death happens, it matters how much you make of your life. Um, and I think that's kind of more what he was getting at, like, hey, make the most of it, do what you love because like, you don't get a redo. Yeah. So you can't be afraid of death. You just have to live every day like you might die tomorrow. And as you get older, you realize you don't have as much time. So you actually do better. And I feel like you say what's true, you treat people better. You understand life so much more. So I guess the answer is just get older and then you understand so much more. Yeah, just get old, mate. <laughs> <laughs> life is... <laughs> okay, can we go back to the sunset now? Life is a saucepan and you're the butter. <laughs> we were just discussing the lottery. The 1.25 billion <laughs> dollars and Stephanie has bought a ticket. Actually, she said just today she bought five. And now Christina, who just turned 18 recently, is going to buy her own oh ticket. God. The guy thought I was underage. Did you have to show a license? Yeah. That's funny. Oh. oh. The site is down, by the way. The site is down. down. I got 45. 36, 13, and your last number is 14. And as a spoiler, we actually didn't win the Mega Millions, unfortunately, but it was a fun little family uh, project getting the tickets. So that's it from here. Hope you had a great uh, weekend, great Saturday, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Let's get a little wild. Drive on a thousand miles. Hit every lotto along the way. A man shakes her hand. Boo!